thanks to Assassin's Creed Odyssey for sponsoring this episode. I'm Matt. I'm Carrie. We are the Stagmer Brothers of Baltimore Knife and Sword. We're going to be building some of your favorite weapons, and some weapons that you've never seen before. This is Man at Arms, Reforged. We haven't made an item from Skyrim or the Elder Scrolls universe in quite some time, and to be honest, this helmet is one of our favorite things that we've made on the show. And Ilya, he's had an idea of what he's wanted to make from that game for a long, long time. But some of the grinding elements are a little intimidating, and the time just hasn't been right until now. As per your requests, superior, lore-friendly, Dawnbreaker. To create the blade for Dawnbreaker, we're gonna be using pattern welded steel. Now, one of the most visual parts of that blade on the sword is that it has seven or so fullers running the full length on either side of the blade. And we're going to have to give it an aged and etched look anyway. So we decided to make it out of 15 and 20 and 1095. We're gonna layer it up, 1095 etches very dark, and 15 and 20 etches very bright. So that'll give us really beautiful contrast. You can see that I've already scuffed the pieces. The main reason for doing that is that there was a little rust on all of it, and we don't want any oxygen to get in between our layers during the weld. All I have to do is alternate the stack, get the billet welded up, hand it off to Ilya, and he'll begin the forging. With the initial billet now forge welded, Ilya is going to move on to the hot cut and fold stage to increase his layer count. He'll be doing this process at least four times, getting his desired layer count to nearly 500. For the hilt assembly on Dawnbreaker, it's a pretty complicated piece. We're gonna have to construct this out of several parts in order to fit it into the flask to do the casting. One of the most important features about it is that it's circular and very symmetrical. So everything has to look right. Otherwise, number one, it's not gonna fit together right, or it's just not gonna look like it actually does in the game. What I've done is taken some polymer clay and begun a sort of rough form that I'm gonna go in and refine. After I've got my shape fully refined and most of my details worked in, I can take an X-Acto knife and easily separate the pieces. So then I have my two halves that I'm going to put into the casting cradle and later form into the actual finished piece. Now that Ilya's finished layering his material, he draws out the form of the blade and forms the point.
widen the blade and begin creating the edges. Philia now begins to hand bevel, working directly on the anvil. we now have our Dawnbreaker blade forged. Ilya did a great job forging it about 90% of the way, so I don't have a lot of grinding to do. He also cut off the tang portion and got that right where it needs to be. And while we weren't looking, Ilya actually snuck in an extra fold. So this blade is now about a thousand layers and it's not every day I get to grind on a Damascus blade with a thousand layers. So that's pretty cool. My job is just to true up the perimeter and go in and remove all the scale off the surface and get this blade ready for heat treat. As Matt begins to grind this sword, he'll be working on the edges and the flats. Instead of what we'd normally do, where we would probably just start with one edge and finish it all the way to form and then go to the next side, he'll be alternating and looking at the edge and looking at the surfaces to make sure that he's chewing the blade as he goes. blade now rough ground to shape. It's time for heat treat. Ilya places the blade into the long heat treating forge and carefully adjusts the propane in the air to get a nice even heat on the blade. Once he's satisfied, he pulls it out and quenches it into oil. After he quenches it for about eight seconds, he pulls the blade and hands it to me for straightening. I have a few seconds to get it nice and straight and then I clamp it into the vise and let it cool slowly. We will be using a hot oil bath, heated up to around 400 degrees to accomplish our temper. Ilya is gonna pull the blade while still up to temperature and do any final adjustments that we need to make the blade straight. All right, now that our blade has been heat treated and tempered, I've gone ahead and scuffed the entire surface on the 80 grit. I didn't want to use a rough grit because this is a pretty robust blade and I need a lot of material to add in a ton of fullers. But the first thing I have to do is strike in our central fuller, which is a little wider than all the fullers after that. What I'm gonna use is a slightly rounded wheel with just a small peak. I'll come in after with the fully rounded wheel and make it wider. After I grind the central fuller, I'm gonna grind a lot of different fullers that stack up against it, almost across the full width of the blade. All the corresponding fullers after it are gonna mimic that, so I have to really take my time and make sure it doesn't wander at all. Got the Dawnbreaker waxes ready. Rick's been working for a couple of days on them. It takes a long time to do this kind of stuff. It's already fitted to the blade. This is the pommel. I took some machining wax, which is this dark blue, turned the basic shape, and then Rick took the green, cut some overlays, and matched it up so it'll both match the guard and match the drawings for the sword. I've already got this sprued on a base. I'll be putting a metal flask around the outside, filling it with investment, basically like plaster which will then fire. And when we fire that to harden it, the wax will melt out, leaving a cavity. And that's where we're gonna pour the bronze. And then we'll polish the piece and get it together. All right, 
At this point, I've completed the straight fullers on both sides of the blade. And I'll be honest, guys, it was nerve wracking. This is by far the most complex series of fullers I've had to grind on one single blade. And it's only gonna get worse. Now, I have to grind the fullers at the tip. I've used a marker to draw on my guidelines, but really the transitions are what's tricky. I have to make sure that I don't overgrind these lines. If I go past the leave little X's, it'll look really sloppy. I'm gonna use the variable speed grinder, turn the speeds way down, just stop my fuller just short of the straight ones, and then by hand, I'll go in there and blend those and make them look all as one. I'm now about to cast the garden pommel for the Skyrim sword. As I do the pommel, it's a pretty standard flask size, about four inches around. But the guard is very large. This flask is six inches by 10 inches and weighs almost 15 pounds. All right, now that we have our fullers ground in and mostly polished all the way out, we can now move on to refining our edge into a nice sharp cutting edge. But first I want to address something that I don't think we've ever done on the show, and that's shock or energy transference on a sword blade. So a lot of sword makers think you should keep the tang as thick as possible on a sword because that's where a lot of breaks happen. So they think that more mass equals a stronger tang, but that's not how it works at all. You actually need distal taper from the shoulder all the way out to the point and from the shoulder out to the end of the tang. If you hit a sword, the shock is gonna transfer down here. And if you have a big drastic thickness change right at the shoulder, that shock is gonna stop right there. And that's why you see a lot of people who actually use swords for either cutting or hard combat snap their blades right at the shoulder. So what you actually have to do is leave this portion right at the shoulder, the thickest part on the sword blade, tapering out towards the point and thinning out towards the end of the tang. That way, the shock will transfer all the way into the handle nice and evenly, and you won't get that really hard break point. Once the color is gone from the button of metal that's exposed, we know that our temperatures have fallen down below 1,000 degrees. We have to be very careful, especially on a large flask, as molten material inside can cause a steam explosion. All right, guys, all this work finally comes down to this. The final step before we can assemble our sword is to etch our blade. This project was not only a test of skill for all the craftsmen involved, but more so patience for everyone. Everything from Ilya forging a blade that was over a thousand layers to Rick spending several days sculpting the guard pieces and not to mention my work on doing the fullers. I mean, people know me as the guy who grinds blades really fast. So for me to spend an entire day just grinding the fullers on a fairly small sword, it's a lot of patience. We've wanted to make another weapon from Skyrim for quite some time. This one challenged just about everybody in the shop and pushed us to our limits. I think this piece turned out great. Now let's see how it performs in the demos.
We want to thank Assassin's Creed Odyssey for sponsoring this episode. Assassin's Creed Odyssey, available everywhere October 5th.